the teaching of Vedanta was amazing. One aspect where Vedanta teaching differed from a normal uh, offline coaching was the attention teachers gave to our doubts. No matter how many times we asked a doubt, the teachers how would patiently clear the doubt every single time. And they made learning a very fantastic experience for us. Yeah. All right. Hi, good evening, everyone. I am Andrina, and thank you so much for joining us today. We are going to together explore the world of cell, right? Okay, as the session, you already know. So let's get started. Now, before we get started, I have this really interesting thing to talk about okay the other day I was walking with my friend okay in the beautiful park and she turns towards me and she says right she says Ki, you know how are we same or different to trees right very simple question she asked me how are we same or different to trees right and I, at that point of time I did not have an answer to her question so what did I do I came back home and I started thinking all right and I was like okay I need to make a table to organize this information. So I ended up making a table, but I could not complete it on time. All right. So what I want you to do right now with me is to sort of help me complete the table. I can read your chat. I'm great. So I can read your chat and you can tell me all your answers in the chat. All right. And if not, then it's OK. You can freeze the screen and you can answer the table by yourself. Let's look at the table first. Right. OK. So this is what the table looks like. You can see on the left hand side there is me and on the right hand side there is the tree, right? We can see two big circles, right? Here we write all the differences. What are the differences between us and trees, right? And in the middle, the small section, we are going to write what is similar between us and trees. All right? Uh, okay, perfect. Let's see. As you can see, I've already written two differences between us and trees. All right. Let's see the first one that I've written. Uh, we can walk and trees cannot walk. Right. I have not seen a tree in walking. All right. The second difference, very common one. We cannot make our own food. Right. But plants can make their own food using photosynthesis. Right. There are a few more that I know of, but I would really like if you can in the chat, just type quickly. What exactly do you think is the difference between us? and trees right there are a few couple of more that i know of i'm quickly gonna write them down all right um i know that we can talk um and i know that trees cannot talk right perfect i also know the fact that uh, we breathe in oxygen and trees breathe in carbon dioxide. So I'm going to write that. Okay. Let me write that again. Breathe in carbon dioxide. All right. There's another very simple common one. All right that we have arms we have legs all right we have a face but trees don't have arms legs or face okay they have trees branches leaves so i'm gonna write that they have leaves branches and bark they have roots okay you can write differences by yourself by freezing the screen okay so these are some differences I could come up with. Now, these are the differences between plants and us, right? Now, what is the very important similarity between us and plants? All right. The one important or very essential similarity between us and plants is the fact that all of us are made up of cells. Okay. So we're made of cells, right? Not just plants and us. Every living organism that you see around us in the world is made up of cell. All right. Now, let's see what, what are the kind of questions that we are going to find the answers to during this course. Okay. The first question that we're going to answer, especially in this session, is what is a cell? Right. The second question that we're going to answer, 
what are the different parts of plants and animal cell right the third is what are the functions of each part so plant cell and animal cell are very different from each other we are going to explore some things which are present in plant cell which are not there in animal cell or which are there in animal cell and not in plant cell all right and last is we are going to explore the difference between plant cell and animal cell all right perfect let's go ahead okay now all of you i'm pretty sure all of you can see the screen i want you to tell me what is common in all these five pictures right you just have to tell me one word in one word not a phrase not a sentence just in one word what do you think is common in all of these pictures right uh one thing that's common in all of these pictures is the fact all of them have buildings okay we can see all the pictures have buildings in them right now we have buildings but what are buildings made up of buildings are exactly made up of bricks right so bricks are basically the basic structural unit of a building that's what we can call it now have you ever seen a building with just one brick no right exactly so cells work in a similar manner right we are made up of a lot of cells just like a building is made up of a lot of different bricks we are made up of a lot of different cells now any building that you can see your school your house any building right you can see it not just made up of a lot of different cells but also different shape and sizes of cells right so what we're going to see is that cells in our body or in plants also act a certain way right the number shape and sizes of cells in us and plants also change right now before we get into the explanation of cells right exploring what are the, what are the number of cells that are there in us in plants or exploring what are the shape different shapes and sizes of cells in us in plants right we have to answer a very important question why are we studying cells in the first place now i get asked this question a lot of times right why are we learning cell why are we learning about cell it's such a tiny thing right a very simple explanation i'll give you we live in a world right the world has living organisms that includes us and trees right now to understand the world we need to understand all the living organisms in it right and to understand the living organisms we need to understand what are living organisms made up of and living organisms are made up of cell so if we understand cell we are trying to figure out a very essential part of understanding the world and the universe around us right so you can understand the kind of power this holds understanding a very small tiny piece and uh, unlocking secrets to the world and universe around us right perfect now before again we move on to the explanation we are sort of going to do chubhana hi <laughs> thank you for saying that okay now before we move on to the explanation we're going to do a tiny quiz okay don't get intimidated just read read the options and either you can give me the answers on the live chat i can read it right and if not then you can keep the answers to yourself perfect we're going to look at the quiz together and then we're going to get into the explanation perfect all right now the first question says how many cells does the human body have right first is one cell say, say option 2 says two cells option c says hundreds of cells and option d says billions and trillions of cells all right perfect i am good thank you all right now if you have the answer you can write it in the chat and if not you don't want to share it in the chat with anybody you can keep it to yourself all right i'm going to come back to this later let's look at the next question is amoeba a single cell if you're wondering what amoeba is amoeba is here right is amoeba a single cell yes it is a single cell organism b no it is a multi cell it has multiple cells c i have no idea all right i can see people have already started answering good job guys let's look at the next one elephants have bigger cells than human beings okay now the options you have to read very carefully first yes they are bigger in size that's why they have bigger cells 
no the size of the cell doesn't depend upon the size of the organism and c again if you don't have any idea go with the option c right so the question is if the organism is big then the size of the cell is also big perfect let's move on with the next one okay cells are commonly shaped like stars this one is my favorite because usually students get it wrong right so option a is yes they are shaped like a star option b is like no they're not and option c is again i have no idea there's always that option basically it's like you're you're getting there we'll get you there all right the last one is which one of the following has more than one cell paramecium um, an ostrich egg uh, amoeba amoeba remember the picture that we saw here and d is cat right perfect now let's take it back to the first question that we asked ourselves how many cells does a human body have all right let's go back to the analogy that we were with just a couple of minutes ago have you ever seen a building with just one brick i don't think so no matter which building which house no matter which estate you go to you will always find buildings which are made of more than one brick something same happens in our human body human body is very complex okay so we cannot be made of just a single cell we are made up of more than billions and trillions of cells right so option d is correct i can see a lot of you already gave the answer d great job guys i can see all of you are thinking really smart all right right so when an organism has more than one cell we call them multicellular organisms all right you will find that in your books too but this is just a little much more you know like a clever way to remember it whenever you think you're forgetting just think about a building it has a lot of bricks it is a multicellular organism perfect let's move on to the next question is amoeba a single cell yes it is a single cell organism no it is not c i have no idea all right now amoeba as you can see right you can see here uh, all right as you can see here amoeba is in fact a single cell organism yes basically all the tasks in our body that a lot of cells together do in amoeba only a single cell performs a lot of different tasks right so that's like a lot of hard work so remember we discussed like human beings are multicellular organisms amoeba is a unicellular organism you can understand why right because it is only one cell so when a living organism has only one cell it's called a unicellular organisms right human beings are multicellular organisms perfect now let's move on to a tricky question right the question asked you if elephant is big in size it has bigger cells is it true or is it not unfortunately no the size of the cell actually does not depend upon the size of the organism right so a baby will almost have the same size of the cell as you do because both of you are human beings so the size of the cell does not depend upon the size of the living organism so elephants might not have this might not have bigger cells than you do right perfect cells are commonly shaped like stars not really they're not we would like to believe that they are but they're not so there are three very commonly shaped cells that are found in our body they are uh, round spherical and elongated i'm going to quickly show you a picture after the next question so it becomes a little clearer right now which one of the following has more than one cell this was also a trick question paramecium has one cell amoeba as we already discussed has one cell now you'll be very surprised to know an ostrich egg also is a single cell it's considered a single cell right it's actually the biggest size of cell that you can find on world in the world right so last one cat has definitely more than one cell so that's the correct option good evening shabna perfect let's go to all right so we've already discussed let's do a quick recap we've already discussed uh human beings are multicellular organisms why because they have more than one cell amoeba is a unicellular organism because it it is only made up of one cell right now the size the shape of the cell that i was telling you about this the first picture that you will see they are basically red blood cells right are our blood they are red blood cells which are round or spherical in shape then we have muscle cells which are basically elongated right muscle cells which help you to play football which help you to like you know go out and play in the ground run around 
this is the this is the cell which is at work there right and the last cell neurons neurons is basically the cell which is helping you to think right now exactly at this point right so they basically pass on messages in our brain to make us learn better right so these cells are basically long thread like all right now let's again do a very very quick recap of what we have done in this session before we close it up all right all living organisms are made up of cell right organisms with only one cell are known as unicellular organisms organisms with more than uh, organisms with one cell are known as unicellular organisms organisms with more than one cell are known as multicellular organisms exactly this is the kind of slip up that you can do in the exam i have done it so i can tell you right now cells are usually round spherical or elongated in shape that are found in our body right and cell come in all sizes as we've already seen it's always very important to remember that the size of the cell does not depend upon the size of the living organism all right so the elephant might not have bigger cells bigger shape, size cells than you do all right well that is it for today's session i will catch we catch up with you in the next session that's tomorrow so we're going to deep dive a little bit more about cell understand different parts of cell right for plant cells and animal cells well that is it for today thank you so much for joining us i'll see you tomorrow bye oh my god okay <laughs>